my question is, we see in Genesis how Adam and Eve came about. Yeah. And we know that it says not to commit incest. No, the that when they oh my goodness, it, I I'm I'm just confused and I would like some help with it. The, no, see, this is the thing. Right there, you stop them. Say stop. Who told you it's incest and who defines what incest is? Just what it uh, is said in the Bible. From what when telling me when did God define incest incestuous relationships? It's in Leviticus a Leviticus twenty. But when did he say? These are now incestuous relationships. Later. Later. Okay. Light switch. You cannot avoid the fact that early on when you have few human beings on earth, the only way you can procreate is if family members procreate among themselves. Otherwise, how the hell are you going to have human reproduction and a large number of human beings correct I so what they're doing is they're taking god's later standard and imposing it on an earlier time i make that makes sense you understand the point yes that god makes who's infinitely wise understands if there's only one male human couple it is unavoidable and inevitable siblings will have to be intimate in order to then procreate but then when the numbers are large enough, then it stops. There's no need to do that. Make, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. That's why I would stop them before they finish. Wait, wait, hold, hold, hold. I said, wait, where did you get the definition of incest from? They'll say from God. You mean the same God who created Adam and Eve and didn't deem it to be incestuous for siblings to marry in order to spread the human race? And then after the human race was large enough, where you didn't need to do that that's when he says from now on no you won't do this because now it's incest um, that makes complete sense yeah that's what i would say to them brother so always attack the assumption behind the question who told you that it's incest from the very beginning okay i'll give you a very bad example very bad example let's say a nuclear holocaust occurs and you have only a brother and sister who survive that's it. What what do they do then? Yeah, well, yeah, they can either they can either die, die or continue to Ew, but that's incest. <laughs> you understand? The circumstances at times will necessitate dire choices and reactions. That's actually the sin of Lot's daughters. If you actually read Genesis 19, 30 onwards, mm -hmm. they erroneously assumed. I don't know why, but the Bible reports it. And let me talk about because that's another one that Bible butchers uh, butcher. They say, how can God record that a prophet slept with his daughter? They, okay, now, guys, this is serious. Let me teach you who are serious students who want to learn. You who are serious students who want to learn. Number one, the Bible records actual history as it is without sugarcoating it, without God necessarily approving it. You guys got to understand how your Bible is written. The Bible is an accurate book of history that will accurately report historical events without endorsing these events. It's just like watching the news or reading a newspaper and says, such and such person murdered such and such or raped such and such. They're reporting the news. They're not endorsing these events. So that's number one. So number two, the Bible records Lot's daughters, erroneously thinking the entire human race had been wiped out and they were the only survivors. Now, Lot's daughters were wrong. They were mistaken, but that's what they thought. When they saw the blast of the brimstone and fire decimating Sodom and Gomorrah and neighboring cities, they erroneously assumed God had wiped out the entire face of the earth and that they're only survivors. In light of that, they assume. Well, the only choice we have is we get pregnant by our father to preserve human race or we all die and the human race goes extinct. Now, the Bible doesn't condone this, but it's stating a fact. Here it is. And Lot went up from Zor, which means small, and stayed in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him. 
for he was afraid to stay in Zoar, and he stayed in the cave, he and his two daughters. Then the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on the earth to come into us after the manner of the earth. See, this was the reason why they committed incest. Not because, oh, daddy's fine. He's sexy. Daddy looking fine. No, no. There are no human beings. Our dad is old. And if he dies, there we go. No more human seed. So we better take matters into our own hands and save the human race. Okay, now let's read it. Come, let us make our father drink wine and let us lie with him that we may preserve our seed through our father. So their intention was noble. Let me explain. Their intention, what the Muslims say, Nia, was good. If there are no human beings, we have no choice but get pregnant from our father to preserve the human seed. The intention was good, but they were wrong. And because of that, they made a boo-boo. And they knew that their father... If he was sober, wouldn't do it. So they got him drunk. Does God condone getting drunk? No. Does God condone what the daughters did? No. But they did it, and God doesn't lie, and he doesn't sugarcoat it. Okay, so let's go. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with his father, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Now it happened on the following day that the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father, let us make him drink wine tonight also, and you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve our seed through our father. So they made their father drink wine. That night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot conceived by their father. And the firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. Those are the Moabites. He is the father of Moabites to this day. As for the younger, she also bore a son and called his name Ben-Ami. He is the father of the sons of Ammon, the Ammonites of this day. Okay, now, did you see the principle? Yes. So what was the principle for everyone else? When you do not have enough humans to preserve the human race, you have no choice but to sleep among one another. Now, can I show you guys examples where the Bible will report something without God approving of the thing that took place, where God tells you, I'm not happy with this, but he reports it nonetheless. Here's what I want you to do, guys, when you get a chance. Just read 1 Samuel. Start reading from chapter 10 onwards. David falls in love with Saul's daughter, Michelle. I call her Michelle. Michelle. Now, Saul was jealous of David, and he wanted to get rid of David because he thought David would usurp his kingdom. So he goes, you want my daughter? You guys ready? If you have children, cover their ears. You want my daughter? Here's the thing. Get me 100 foreskins of the Philistines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because remember, if you wanted to marry someone, you'd have to give a maher in Arabic, a dowry. All is telling David, the dowry, the bride price for my daughter, get me one. 100 foreskins of the Philistines. Okay, now let me explain why Philistines. Number one, Philistines did not circumcise their male sons. Number two, that means David would have to go kill 100 Philistines, cut off the foreskin, and hand it to Saul. You see how disgusting this is? Wow. That's in the, yeah, you read it. Yeah. Guess what David did? He came back and gave him 200 foreskins. He had killed 200 Philistines, him and his men, and he cut off 200 foreskins of 200 uncircumcised Philistines. Here you go. Now give me your daughter. Now, the Bible reports that. If someone doesn't know the Bible and it's stupid, it'll say, is this God's word? Did God inspire David to do this? No. The Bible is an accurate history, recording actual history of things that God hates. Here, let me show it to you. Let me prove to you God was not happy with David all the time because David himself says it. David is telling Solomon why God did not allow David to build the temple. <clears throat> Here it is from David's own mouth. First Chronicles 22, 7 to 10. And David said to Solomon, my son, I had it within my heart to build a house to the name of Yahweh, my God. But the word of the Lord, Yahweh came to me. Who came to him? Jesus. Yep. Jesus, the word of Yahweh, before he became flesh, 
He appeared to David and told him, Jesus did, you have shed much blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house for me because you have shed so much blood on the earth before me. Could Jesus be any clearer that you did a lot of things, David, that I hated and I wasn't happy with? And because of your sins, you're disqualified from building me a temple. In other words, don't read the Bible incorrectly. That's why I say the Bible in the hands of someone untrained is dangerous. Right here you're told, expect to find many things in the Bible God hates, wasn't pleased with, did not approve of, but it happened. And God can't lie or sugarcoat it. Now, one more, brother. Here's an article I wrote on Judges. Here's how you're supposed to read the book of Judges. Here you go. Judges 17, 6. This brings me to my next point, namely evidence from the book of Judges. It's self-proving that God never approved or commanded that such atrocities and wickedness should take place. Judges often repeats the point that Israel did what was right in their own eyes. Here, Judges 17, 6. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his eyes. Judges 21, 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Judges 21, 25. And it's not only here. Look, Deuteronomy 12, verse 8. You are not to do all the things that we are doing here today, where every man does whatever is right in his own eyes. Did you see it? Now, here are examples where you're told that they're doing what they think is right, which is evil in the sight of God. Judges 3, 12. Then the children of Israel once more did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord strengthened King Eglon of Moab against Israel because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Judges 3, 12. Judges 4, 1. When Ehud was dead, the children of Israel once more did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Judges 6, 1. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord gave them into the hands of Midian for seven years. Judges 10, 6. Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They worshiped the Baals, the Ashtoreths, and the gods of Syria, on which Turretin's God had predetermined beforehand to happen. And yet this is compatible with their sinful choices. This is the double talk of Calvinism. Moab, the Ammonites, and the Philistines, they abandoned the Lord and did not serve him. Judges 13, 1. Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord gave them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. So once you understand how the Bible is written, you shouldn't be troubled by this because God didn't approve these acts because we don't worship Turretin's Calvinist God, which is no different than the Sunni Muslim God, who already in eternity in a secret councils preordained, predestined all the evil, even rape, which Jamil Muhammad White admitted for his greater glory. That's Turretin's God, not the God of Scripture. 